Welcome to Finding Stuff Out, the show where you send in your questions and I find out the answers. Sorry, I'm not trying to be rude. It's just I'm doing an experiment. Now, here's the first question from Cordell. Why do bats sleep upside down? The short answer is because they don't have claws on their head to hang on with. Okay, I don't know why bats sleep upside down when they sleep, but by the end of the show, I'll have the answer to your question and a bunch of other cool stuff about sleep. Why do we yawn when we're sleepy? Nobody knows why we yawn when we're tired, but it's contagious, like a cold, except you don't get sick. Scientists say we yawn just from seeing other people yawn. Here's an experiment you can do with your family or your friends. Just do this. And chances are, people around you will start to yawn without even thinking about it. Nobody knows why we yawn. Nobody knows why we yawn. When we yawn, we breathe in oxygen. Get the old air out and the new air in. If you yawn, someone else will too. But we don't know why it's something we do. Cause nobody knows why we yawn. Nobody knows why we yawn. We can put a man up on the moon. We can skate on ice in the month of June. We can build a robot to mow our lawn. But nobody, nobody knows why we yawn. Oh, sorry, I'm still doing my experiment. Were you watching carefully? Did you? Yawn? It turns out it works on chimps too. So next time you're at the zoo. Gotcha! Gotcha, yeah, it's you. Well, well, well. It seems that chimps are not the only animals that yawn. In fact, most of them do. What happens if you sleep your whole life? Nobody knows, Trevor, because no one slept for their entire life. But there are made-up stories like Rip Van Winkle. He fell asleep for 20 years. But judging by this, if you did sleep your whole life, you'd probably end up looking like Santa Claus, only without the reindeer, red suit, or presents. But in real life, nobody sleeps for 20 years in a row. In the wild, big cats sleep up to 20 hours a day. That's this much. That means they're only awake for four hours a day. Because they sleep a lot, they save their energy and don't have to eat as much. Catching your dinner is tiring work. Next question's from Talea. How much do we sleep? Hmm, I've never really thought about how much we sleep in total, but I know that grown-ups sleep eight hours a night. Okay, let's see here. You do eight hours a night times Seven days a week equals 56 times 52 weeks in a year equals 2,912 times the number of years. Oh my gosh, this is unreal! I can't handle it! Why do I even have a calculator this big? <laughs> You're gonna make my head explode! Here we are at a brain research clinic, the perfect place to come after your head explodes and to find out how much we sleep. And here's Anita, a brain specialist. Hi, Harrison. Hi. So, Anita, how much time do we sleep? Approximately 25 years. 25 years? That's a lot of time wasted sleeping. I could do so many better things like play music all night. Yeah! Play music all night! Play music all night! Well, I'm starting to say, Harrison, that's just impossible. You just can't do it. <laughs> Your body would just fall asleep even if you didn't want to. Shucks! Play music all night! Yeah! Woo! Uh. How come we need sleep? Yeah, why do we need sleep? Anita tells me that it has to do with these guys. Growth hormones. We have to sleep so much because that's when our body produces them. They make kids grow. Sleep is also the time when our body does most of its repair work. 
So, not me, but that's why other kids have to sleep so much, right? Sure. <laughs> what does your body do when you sleep? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, to answer that question, why don't we do a little experiment? Go put on your PJs. PJs? Okay. Destiny, the best way to answer your question is for me to go to sleep. With wires attached to my head. So I'm ready to go to sleep, and these wires are gonna measure my brain activity while I'm asleep. And no, in case you're wondering, I don't sleep with a teddy bear. The answer to what happens to your body when you're asleep is in your brain. So is that a real brain? Yeah, it's a real cow's brain. It's about the size of a 12-year-old's brain. Thanks a lot, now I'm gonna have nightmares. Okay, we're recording. Good night, Harrison. So I went to sleep while a camera watched how I moved. And the wires on my head sent signals to a computer that drew my brain waves. It showed how active my brain was. Then, Anita showed me what happened to my body while I slept. Harrison, this is when you're awake. Okay. As you can see, your brain waves are smaller. Here, my brain waves are small. That shows that I'm still awake. Then the waves get bigger as my body slows down and I go into a light sleep. You can see that your brain activity is starting to change. Yeah, it goes more exactly. jagged there. Yep, the waves are bigger, which means you're starting to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. These are what's called sleep spindles. Okay. So that means you're around stage two, so you're asleep now. Okay. And your breathing is still constant and your muscles are still moving. Scientists measure sleep in five stages. The waves show how I am asleep now, and as the night goes on, my sleep gets deeper. Then, something suddenly changes. All of a sudden, you see really... Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's... A lot of fluctuations up and down. Wow. Big change. Yeah. The fifth stage of sleep is when you dream. It's called REM, which stands for Rapid Eye Movement. It's called that because our eyes move around very fast while we sleep. Our dreams feel so real, but we don't move. And even your muscles, you can see, now change completely. So your muscles are paralyzed and you can't move. And the only muscles ca that can move are the muscles for breathing, your eyes, and for hearing. Wow. It's believed we can't move because it's nature's way to prevent us from acting out our dreams and getting hurt. How come when my sister sleepwalks, she can go up and down a ladder? Well, we don't exactly know why people sleepwalk, but we do know that she's probably in stage three or four of her sleep because in REM, your muscles are paralyzed so you can't move. Children tend to sleepwalk more than adults and you tend to grow out of it. Is it dangerous to sleepwalk? No. Um, you tend to do everyday activities like fold your clothes or walk up and down the stairs. It's really weird. I'd probably like go to the fridge or play drums. Well, it's nice to know that sleepwalking is not dangerous. Except if you bump into something. That your brain is smart enough to keep your heart beating, even when you sleep. And finally, that sleep does help kids grow. We really do need to go to bed. Thanks, Anita. And thanks a lot for the nightmares. <gasps> Are you feeling better? Much better. Why do we have good and bad dreams? The Flat Earth Corner! <sighs> ah, to sleep, perchance to dream. Why indeed do we have good and bad dreams? I believe that it was not the large, lip-snackingly yummy pepperoni pizza that I had eaten before bed that caused my bad dreams. Nay, methinks it was the work of a 
demon! The mare part in Nightmare is Old English for demon. That's because people used to think bad dreams are caused by night demons. Nowadays, we know the only person that can give you a nightmare is yourself. <laughs> Though, having pizza before bedtime probably isn't the best idea. Your body wants to rest, not digest. But nightmares can't hurt you, so next time you're having one, think of an ending that's not scary. Say you have a dream that you're in your room when all of a sudden... Instead of being scared, oh, you again. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You're that scary nightmare my imagination created. Well, I've decided you're not so scary anymore. Oh. Nope, you're not that scary. Instead, you're going to be a balloon. <laughs> Goodbye, nightmare. <laughs> See you later. That's better. So, next time you have a bad dream, remember, you're in charge, not the thing that's scaring you. Just turn that dream into something fun, like this one, my personal favorite. I can fly. Experts say a lot of kids dream about flying. They say when we're having this kind of dream, we're allowing ourselves to experience success by using our imagination and courage. Woo! I just flew in from Las Vegas. Man, are my arms tired. Hey, what's that baby head doing in my dream? So everybody sleeps, right? Yeah. But I want to know about your dreams. So what is your weirdest dream you've ever had? My weirdest dream was when I was getting chased by a giant pink robot. <laughs> I turned into a director and then I keep saying action and everybody's not listening to me and then a random blue pig keeps coming and dancing. <laughs> My weirdest dream was when 10,000 cats were chasing me. A dog ate me. <laughs> Your dog ate you? Yes, he ate me, and when he spit me out, I did it to E.T. <laughs> when ninja was attacking me, like with ninja stars and stuff, for no reason. A lion comes into town and eats a chicken bone. He goes into um, the store, and then he eats um, the chicken bones from in there, and everyone runs out screaming like they're getting chased. <laughs> I turn into a Lego guy, and I had the secret lair and stuff. My weirdest dream is when a blue kangaroo was chasing me for no reason. My weirdest dream is when I turned into a blueberry. <laughs> a blueberry? When I turned into a small person and a guinea pig was chasing after me. <laughs> turned into a cloud and I floated all the way to China and when I came back I became a new normal human again. Well, there it is. I'll tell you that my weirdest dream was when I went to this really weird school with some really weird kids, and they started telling me about all their weird dreams. Zombies! <laughs> dreams aren't the only thing we do when we're sleeping, as Adonijah points out. How come when Grandpa sleep, they, they sound so loud? <laughs> I was going to ask your grandpa, but he was sleeping. And by the way, he does snore loudly. But I checked, and anybody can snore, no matter what age they are. When you sleep, your body relaxes, including all this stuff. When it relaxes, all that stuff in your throat blocks your air passages. So you breathe harder to get air. Then that stuff vibrates, making the snoring noise. But we do tend to snore more as we get older. That's because our muscles get weaker. So all that stuff is looser and blocks out air passages. And that's why Grandpa snores so loud. Even if you're young and not overweight, you can still snore. Uh-oh. Do try this at home. You can try the snoring experiment right now as it happens. First, tighten up your nasal cavities right here. 
Then, breathe in and you should be able to make a sound like this. Did you get it? So next time you want to stay up late reading comics under the covers with a flashlight? If your parents come along... Harrison, are you still up? You can fool them into thinking you're sleeping. No, oh, I guess he's asleep. I never told you that, all right? Why don't fish die when they sleep? So to answer Yarn's question, I'm here with marine specialist Nicole Can, who can answer your question. Hi. So why don't fish die when they sleep? It's a really great question, and mostly it's because they don't sleep the same way that we do. They never get to sort of nestle into the kelp and have really sweet fishy dreams, whatever they dream about. Instead, they keep sleeping while they're swimming. So as they go around, they can shut down most of the energy levels in their bodies, keep taking in water through their mouths and passing it over their gills, but they're not really paying attention to what they're doing. They're sort of zoned out. As soon as a predator comes by, though, they can snap awake and swim away. So it's kind of like sleepwalking. Maybe sleep swimming. Sleep swimming. Do whales sleep? So, do whales sleep? Absolutely they do, but they sleep completely differently than we do. It's actually my favorite thing about these whales. Like Keela here, she can turn off half of her brain at a time. Because they're mammals, like we are, they have to breathe just the same as we do. But they have to think about every single breath they take. So while one half is asleep, the other half keeps them going up to the surface to grab air, and then they can switch. And they keep going back and forth and back and forth until they've had enough rest and they can get on with their day. It's a little strange. A little bit. <laughs> so do they sleep the same amount that we do? Absolutely not. First of all, they never sleep for as long as we do. Mm -hmm. But some whales, dolphins, and even killer whales when they're babies, they might not sleep at all for the first month of their life. They don't sleep? Their parents must be more tired than mine. <laughs> what about other creatures like sea otters? Sea otters sleep too, but they do it at the surface. So they get a big group together, and sometimes they'll even actually hold paws like this to make sure that nobody floats away while they're sleeping. So everybody from whales to otters to fish, everybody sleeps, but they all sleep a little bit differently than we do. <laughs> Harrison? <laughs> I checked, and it's not only sea creatures that sleep differently than we do. Monkeys and chimpanzees like to sleep in the trees where they're safer from animals that could sneak up and attack them if they were on the ground. Giraffes and elephants don't have to worry very much about getting eaten, except when they are sleeping. So they need only three hours of sleep a day. Birds can even snooze for 30 seconds at a time when they're in the air. That's how they manage to fly non-stop when they fly away for the winter and return in the spring. Some animals sleep during the day. They don't get busy till night, like raccoons, hamsters, fireflies, and you guessed it, bats. And Cordell, that takes us back to your question that kicked off the show. Why do bats sleep upside down? The big answer is... To make a quick getaway! Say, poor Mr. Bat is asleep when a hungry raccoon spots him. A bird could just quickly fly up and away. But poor old Mr. Bat can't take off fast like a bird. His wings aren't strong enough. He can only start to fly by dropping into the air. So what's a bat gonna do? Suddenly, that old raccoon lunges at Mr. Bat. Mr. Bat lets go and drops through the air. He gets up enough speed to start flying and make his getaway. Whoa, that story had me hanging on the edge of my seat. When you hang on to something, you have to think about tightening your hands around it. But for a bat, it's the opposite. Their claws naturally close. They have to consciously make them open. That keeps them from falling when they're asleep. So they have to wake up and let go and start flying. And that is why they sleep upside down. 
And just for the record, this position is very uncomfortable. Thanks for watching Finding Stuff Out. See you next time. Ugh. Hi, welcome to Finding Stuff Out, the show where you send in your questions and I find out the answers. I hope I'm not scaring you right now. I'm doing this because of a question I got from Austin. Why do spiders have eight eyes? Yeah, why do they? I know spiders have eight legs, but eight eyes? That's crazy! Well, Austin, I don't know why spiders have eight eyes, but by the end of the show, I'll find out the answer because I'm focusing on one of our most important senses, sight. Now here's a question from Sophia. How do we see with our eyeballs? Well, Sophia, I made this music video to answer your question. Check it out. We see with them, light comes through our pupil and the lens to the retina, where rods and cones send signals to our brain, not our nose, but the image comes in, upside down, so our clever brain turns it around, then the down is up, and the up is down, and it all makes sense again. Glad I don't have to wear a spider eyes every day. Anyway, here's a question from Serena. Why do cats' eyes glow in the dark? Well, Serena, I checked. And remember that retina I sang about? It's this layer at the back of the eyeball that senses light. Cats have an extra layer behind the retina. It captures more light. That's why cats can see well in the dark. That extra layer is like a mirror, so it reflects the light that comes into the cat's eyes and it's why their eyes seem to glow in the dark. Meow. But the cat's eyes aren't glowing. They're just reflecting the light back out again. Why can't we see infrared? Well, Anthony, I checked, and it's amazing, but we can't see some kinds of light. The sun makes light in what are called waves. Just like waves in water, they can be different distances apart. They call all these light waves a spectrum. Our eyes can only see the light waves in the middle of the spectrum. It's what we call visible light. But there are waves of light we can't see, like ultraviolet and infrared. But birds and insects can see ultraviolet, and some snakes can detect infrared. And lucky for them, they can sense not just the infrared light made by the sun, but also the infrared light animals give off. Mmm, tasty. The snakes don't see that light through their eyes. They have sensors lower down that detect the infrared of the animals they hunt. Now here's a question from Dante. How can hammerhead sharks see with eyes like that? Yeah, imagine if you had eyes way out on the side of your head like that. I can see you. And you too. It looks like a hammerhead shark's eyes point to the side but I found out that their eyes are tilted slightly forward so they can see depth just like we can. And with their eyes way out on the side like that, they can not only see out to the front and sides, they can see behind themselves too. I'm glad they can't walk on land. Humans have excellent vision, but we're not perfect. We can get tricked by something called an optical illusion, and that's today's... Uh-oh, do try this at home. She knows all about eyes. And I think we're in for a fun surprise. Please welcome Dr. Kathy Mullen. Hi, Harrison. I've got something really fun to show you. I'm being hypnotized. Stop it! <laughs> wow, it really looks like it's spinning but it's just a normal piece of paper, right? Yeah, the image on the piece of paper isn't moving at all. But why does it look like it's moving then if it's actually not? Well, this pattern's forming an image on the back of your eye, rather like in a camera. And then as you move your eyes over the page, that image on the back of your eye is moving all around. And your brain is fooled into thinking that the pattern's moving. Cool, what's next? Now, which of these two lines do you think is the longest? 
the longer one. The longer one is the top one, I'm going to say. Well, I think most people would agree with you, but that's not actually correct. What about this one, then? What? No, that one isn't longer, either. In fact, both of these lines are exactly the same length. What? 37. And 37? Yeah, your eye isn't telling the truth. They're the same. They're the same length. But how? What's happening here is that these two end pieces that are fanning out mm -hmm. like this, they're stretching the line and making your brain think it's longer than it is. But with this bottom line, the opposite is happening. The little pieces pointing inwards are fooling your brain into thinking it's shorter. That's crazy. But there's lots of other illusions like this one. Ah, so which of these three blocks do you think is the tallest? Uh, hmm. The tallest one is the one at the back. But actually, they're all exactly the same size. They're all exactly the same? They are. 13. 13? They're all 13 centimeters. Yep, this is an illusion of perspective. So it's rather like a tall building. We know when we look at a tall building that it's very, very big, but when we're a long way away from it, it might seem quite small. Let's check it out in the real world. So we have these three identical rectangular blocks here, and if we set them up, the one closest will look the biggest, and the one furthest will look the smallest, right? Yeah, that's right. But in our illusion, our brain thinks that the block at the right is bigger than the others, because the perspective lines trick us into believing that it's further away. But take away that perspective lines, and the three blocks look the same size. It's only a drawing. It's not like in the real world. So I guess seeing isn't always believing. Well, not exactly. Thanks for being on my show. You're welcome. Dr. Mullen showed me some illusions, and I'm gonna test one out on some kids today with my assistant, Evan, here. To me, it looks like number eight is doing circles. It looks like an endless tornado, and I feel like I'm gonna fall in it. It looks like a giant eye. It's really big, but scary. It just looks like the circles never stop, and they look like at the end, it changes colors. Some illusions involve not seeing things that actually are there, as I'm about to show you in... My Great Challenge! Today, my great challengers are Michael, yes. Nicholas, yes. and Alexia. Yeah. <laughs> so today, my great challenge is all about optical illusions, things that aren't always what they seem at a first glance. So today, I'm focusing on the illusion of camouflage. This moth is camouflaged. It blends in with its background, so it's hard to see, just like this scorpion fish. So here are the rules. There are 60 jelly beans hidden throughout the attic, and you'll have two minutes to try to find as many as possible. Sound good? Yeah. yeah. So we have Team Hawk, Team Lion, and Team Wolf. One of the jelly beans is right in front of them. OK, so you have two minutes starting now. Go. Ow. <laughs> Hawk gets it. Wolf uses her predator eyes to spot her first jelly bean. And another quick one. Lion and Hawk go for the computer desk. I hid eight jelly beans there, including one in a candy jar. <laughs> that one will be hard to spot. How many can they find? One. And only two for Lion. Oh, Hawk finds the one in the candy jar. Lion makes a move for the experiment table. I've got 11 tricky ones hidden there. How many can he find? One. Two. Oh, he's walking away. Going toward the pink napkins. Misses it. He walks by the yellow one, too. There's five jelly beans in the small area near the aquarium. Hawk finds one of them. I also match the colors of my jelly beans to the toys at the back of the attic. Miss the one on the gorilla. Hawk joins Wolf upstairs to see if she's missed any. Bingo! 30 seconds. They've been searching for a minute and a half, but there's still a lot of jelly beans left. 
Looks like Lion saw something. Or maybe not. My masterpiece, the granola special, still hasn't been found. But Wolf is getting dangerously close. Will she find it? No, it's just too good. <laughs> 10 seconds. Time for a last ditch effort. Okay, time's up. Let's see how you guys did. Seven, eight, nine jelly beans for Team Wolf. Let's see how Team Lion did. Three, four, five jelly beans. So Team Wolf is beating Team Lion right now. Aww. And let's see how Team Hawk did. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. It looks like Team Hawks are winner. Yes. Awesome, congratulations. So you guys found about 30 jelly beans, which means there are still 30 more hiding in this attic. What? In order to fool the eye, all good camouflage relies on matches in color, texture, and even shape. That's the key to the survival of a lot of species in nature. The animals that want to eat them can't see them. Well, all of you guys get to keep the jelly beans that you found, but I wouldn't eat them because I painted some of them, and also Squeakers, my guinea pig, was running around here, so I don't know if the brown ones are actually jelly beans. Ew. Yeah. Well, thanks for playing my great challenge, guys. And why do people wear glasses? Maybe it's a fashion statement. Actually, it helps them refocus the light. It's pretty cool how it works. Check out this cartoon I made. If you have perfect vision, your eye looks like this. If you are nearsighted, this happens. Because of the way your eye is shaped, you can see things that are close to you just fine. But something that is far away gets focused here in front of the retina instead of on the retina. If you're farsighted, you can see things that are far away. But because of the way your eye is shaped, things that are close to you get focused behind the retina, so it looks fuzzy. Glasses refocus the light to be in the right place not behind or in front of your retina. Why do people go blind? To find out, I came to Calgary to visit with Tate Hoyam. Hi, welcome to my show. Thanks for having me on your show. So, to answer Devin's question, what causes blindness? Well, it can be by an accident. You can be born with it, you can get a disease that causes it, or your eyes can just wear out over time. Tate is 12 and lost most of his vision to a disease when he was just a baby. But that doesn't stop him from doing a lot of cool things. Like playing this weird instrument called a hydrolophone. That's awesome. When someone's blind, do they see anything at all? It depends. Some people are completely blind and can't see anything at all. But some people can see shapes and shadows. Some people can see a bit. Anything. Tate asked me if I wanted to see what he sees. Can I show you some? Sure. OK. Tate, where are you? I'm here. Close your eyes. Close my eyes, why? Because I'm going to put goggles on you. It makes it seem like you have less vision. Oh, OK. OK. And, and there. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Oh. It was weird with the goggles. I could still see a bit, but even walking around was difficult. I can teach you how to use a cane. Oh, OK. So the two things you need to remember is don't lift it up in the air and hit people. Right. Use the hand that you are most comfortable with, right. left or right. So my right hand. Mm -hmm. And then make sure your hand is in the middle, like near your stomach. Mm -hmm. And then when you're walking, you have to go like that as you're walking. Just left and right? Yep. And you have to do it like opposite to what foot. So right, left, right, left, right, left, like that. Right. And then if you hit something, you would stop. OK. Tate can go anywhere he wants with his cane. Which, which way did you go? Tate? I'm not quite there yet. Tate? So how can blind people manage to do the same things that sighted people do? Well, even if you're completely blind, you can still read. It's called Braille. Why don't I show you some? Sure. How does Braille work? It's made up of dots, normally on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. But people can actually tell what it says by putting their fingers on it. How about I show you how to make the letter F? Sure. So if you put one there, one there, and one there, that's F. OK, yeah. You got then, it, yeah. And then you can feel the bumps. Yeah, and they're a little bit smaller on a piece of paper, but right. they're still there. Right. Mm -hmm. What does it say on this piece of paper? How about you find out? There's a kind of a cheating thing here. Okay. You can look at it. OK. <laughs> Let's see here. 
We got an F. I. What's this? Uh, oh, that's an N. <laughs> You're probably a lot faster than this, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Here, how about I try it? Okay, yeah. And I'll read it with my fingers, too. Okay, go for it. Uh, finding stuff out with Harrison and special guest Tate. Nice. Yeah. Why don't we go play some road hockey? Sure. Well, Harrison, since we can't see very well, a lot of times me and other people who are visually impaired like to use these, a ball or a puck with a bell or bells inside it. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah! Where did it go? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> of course, it's not exactly a fair game. Yes! Kate is so used to not having sight oh. that he can sense where things are. Yeah! But I sure can. And again. And again. Ah! <laughs> yes! Oh. Okay, before you get too far ahead of me in points, I want to thank you for being on my show. Thanks for having me. Okay, so you've heard the expression, seeing is believing, but can hearing be seeing? Is it true some people see colors when they hear music? Seeing colors when you hear music? I think my parents see red when I play my drums too late at night. Just kidding, but I checked Erica, and it's actually true. There really are people who say that they see colors when they hear music. That made me think, if you take all the colors in the universe and multiply it by all the sounds in the universe, that could be like a bazillion combination. Guitar times yellow equals orange times cello. Head getting warm if there's eight notes in an octave times a million colors. Multiplied by a rim shot. Flats and sharps and banjos and harps. Brain sending signals at light speed. People who can see color when they hear sounds have what's called synesthesia. Scientists still aren't sure why it happens. But they think that for people who see color when they hear music, there might be some overlap in their brains in the parts that normally separate hearing from seeing. Now here's a question from Jessica. Why don't worms have eyes? She knows about bugs, the hows and whys, and the reason that worms don't have eyes. Please welcome Julie Hamill. Oh. I have a surprise for you. Gee, for me? Ugh. What about these worms? How do they see if they don't have any eyes? Well, here you go. You can look at it. Well, actually, they have light-sensitive cells, which help them detect light. But there's no lights underground for them. <laughs> yeah, but when they're going out, it's big danger for them. Julie tells me that the light-detecting cells tell the earthworm when it's leaving the safe, dark underground for the dangerous light above-ground world. So are there any other animals that don't have eyes? Well, actually, there's cave fish, which live really, really deep underwater where it's all dark. So they don't need eyes. They have sensitive cells which detect pressure and also movement around them. And there's also bats. They have eyes, but they use echolocation. Right, echolocation. That helps them when it's pitch dark. Notice that echolocation has the word echo in it. Bats make really high-pitched sounds, but we can't hear them. Like all sounds, they travel through the air as waves. When the waves hit an object, they bounce off that object. A bat listens carefully to the echoes. That's echolocation. And I see you've brought some spiders with you, and those all have eight eyes, right? Not exactly. I have a couple species here. Would you like to see the tarantula? OK. Like most spiders, the tarantula has eight eyes. But others have six four, and even two eyes. There are even spiders with no eyes at all. But at this moment, all I can think about are the eight eyes crawling on Julie's arms. So can it see me right now with all those eyes? Yeah, they can see quite a lot. Because of the eyes, they can see all around them. But he sees you as a shadow. Right, so they don't see color, it's all black and white? It's all black and white, and it's all fuzzy. That's kind of weird then. 
They have all those eyes, but they can't see as well as us. No, but they can see more around. Right. If I do this, they'll see me. Weird. <laughs> well, thanks for being on my show and for not putting the spider on me. Maybe next time we'll try and take it. We'll see. <laughs> all the spidery talk brings me back to the question that started this web of exploration. Why do spiders have eight eyes? Well, Austin, the big answer is the better to see you with. If you had eight eyes and eight arms, imagine the wild drum solo you could play. Or maybe not. I found out from Julie that spiders don't actually see as well as we do, but having all those extra eyes lets them see in many different directions at once. It also lets them see the things they want to eat and avoid the things that want to eat them. That's my show for this week. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Sorry about the noise. My cousin's visiting with her baby, and it's a little loud in the house. He finally went to sleep. I mean, I don't mind too much. Babies are neat, but my sister is driving me crazy today. She's copying everything I say, like this. Stop copying me. Stop copying me. I mean it. I mean it. The only defense is to say stuff she can't copy. Large Hadram Collider. Large Hadrasur Provider. Oh yeah! <laughs> Oops, I woke up the baby. I can guess what happens next. Harrison, I told you not to wake up the baby. Sorry, Mom. So I've been thinking a lot about babies and families lately, and apparently so have you, because you've sent me a lot of questions. Here's a question from Kalia. Why do we have families? The short answer is to drive us crazy. But seriously, sometimes it's hard putting up with crying babies, copycat sisters, and stressed out parents. But there must be a good reason why we have families. I'll find out the answer and your other questions about babies and families by the end of the show. Here's a question from Alana. Why are brothers annoying? Is that your little brother that copies you all the time? That is annoying. But I checked and found out there's a reason that our little brothers and sisters copy us. Have you ever heard the expression, monkey see, monkey do? Well, monkeys learn by imitating others. Us humans can't help wanting to copy. It's in our nature. It's how your parents learn to do stuff, and your grandparents, and your great-grandparents. We're naturally copycats. I know you are, but what I am I? I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? But what am I? I know you are, 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 but what am I? I found out that copying is a good way to learn to do something. Like tracing a picture helps you learn how to draw. We always want to copy, but that's why TV shows always say, don't try this at home. But to indulge your urge, here's today's... Uh-oh, do try this at home. How good are you at monkey see, monkey do? If I play a drum rhythm, do you think you can copy it just by watching? Here. Did you get that? I'll break it down for you. And that's how I learned how to drum, by learning each thing slowly. Here's another thing I'm trying to learn. Breakdancing is really hard because you have to move super fast. But if I slow it down for you, does that make it easier? Not for me, not yet, but I'll keep practicing. Drumming and breakdancing may look like they're just fun, but they actually help our reflexes balance and even sharpen our mental skills, too.
And when baby animals look like they're playing, they're actually learning too. These cubs are practicing skills they'll need later on to hunt. But enough fun and games. Let's take another question. Why do turtles not care about their babies? Turtles never know their parents. Mom turtles just lay their eggs and leave. When the baby turtles hatch, they're on their own. They don't need parents around because they already know what to do. Other cold-blooded animals like frogs and lizards do the same thing. They lay eggs and leave. Animals that don't take care of their babies have to lay lots of eggs because their babies get eaten by predators. Don't listen to this. Only one in a thousand turtles that are hatched survive. One in a thousand? If I were a turtle, this is how many Harrisons it would take for one of us to become a grown-up. I'm not sure how my mom would feel about having a thousand of me. She already says I'm a handful. But scientists once thought that human parents should be more like turtles. Yar, har, har. I, John Watson, will prove that babies do better without parents who pay attention to them. Being loved makes babies weak. I want to raise strong, unloved babies in baby farms. A hundred years ago, this scientist named John Watson decided that attention for babies was bad. He thought that they shouldn't be picked up, cuddled, or talked to. He was wrong. Today we know that a baby's brain is busy making all kinds of nerve connections. If grown-ups don't talk to a baby, its brain can have trouble learning language. Ignoring a baby can even stunt its brain growth. Fortunately, human nature makes us want to cuddle babies and say silly things to them. I, I don't actually like babies, I'm just... Uh... I'm just testing their hearing. Yeah, that's it. Here's a question from Brianna. Why do babies poop a lot in their diapers? Humans don't like being around poop, obviously. Uh-oh. But babies don't have a lot of control over their bodies at first. When we're born, we can't even hold our head up, much less remember to flush. So until babies are more developed, they make lots of smelly diapers. It's weird. Mr. Whiskers isn't as smart as a human, but he learned how to use a litter box right away. Cats are born wanting to bury their poop. It's their natural way of avoiding predators. Even if there are no predators in your home, your cat doesn't want to take any chances. But what about other animals? I'm here with Lisa at the zoo to learn about poo. We're here at the gorilla enclosure today, and you can see the gorillas kind of go wherever they please. It's a really, really big job for the zookeepers to clean up every day. Oh, I wouldn't want to clean that up. I guess I shouldn't really complain about cleaning up my cat's litter box. No, not really. <laughs> you know, with cats, they instinctively will go to a litter box and bury their poop because they're trying to hide their scent. Right. And with animals like dogs, they don't want to go where their den is, so you can train them to poop outside. Oh. But in the zoo, it's really more difficult because the gorillas, they'll just go where they want to go. So how much poo is created here at the zoo every day? About 15 bridge-sized garbage can fulls. Yeah. 15 garbage cans? That's a lot of poo. Oh, oh, where's the toilet paper? Now here's a question about animal babies from Janik. Why do animal babies grow faster than human babies? Oh. Right. I heard that animals mature in one to two years. If we did that, we'd be grown-ups before we started preschool. It's true. With the elephants that you see behind us, they seem quite helpless when they're born, but they're actually able to walk and keep up with the herd when they're only a day old. Wow, but human babies seem pretty helpless compared to that. It's true. Human babies are helpless. But other animals mature at different rates, too. For example, kittens and some birds are actually born with their eyelids fused together still. Some baby animals, like these tigers, are born very small, but they'll grow very big. Some animals, like joeys, are actually about the size of my thumb when they're born, 
and they're not fully mature until they're seven to 10 months. What's a joey? Oh, that's a kangaroo. Oh. They have to stay in the pouch until they're fully mature. That's so small. <laughs> so why do animals grow up at different speeds? Basically, the more complex an animal is, the longer it needs to develop. So an animal like a fish is ready to go almost right away. Other animals take more time. Right, well, thanks for helping me find stuff out. No problem. Now Thomas has a question about babies. Why are babies so delicate? To help find out, please welcome my special guest, pediatric nurse, Stacy Baker. Welcome to my show. So how's my cousin's baby doing? He's perfect, just like you. How did you calm him down? Some babies just love to be rocked and held. Do you want to hold them? I don't know. I, I, I don't actually know if I should. It's okay. Babies are not as fragile as we think they are. So it's just that babies are born with really big, heavy heads, and the muscles that have to hold it up in their neck aren't very strong. So when you hold a baby, you just have to make sure that you support their neck. You want to try? Sure. Like this. Support their neck? Yeah, just make sure you hold his neck like that. There you go. Am I doing it right? You're doing a great job. Okay. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Let's rock. What do you want? It's okay. It's okay. Look. I guess I just don't have that special baby touch. <laughs> so Thomas was wondering why babies are so delicate. Well, babies are in their mummy's belly for about nine months, right? Mm -hmm. And then they have to come out because they just get too big. But they're not fully developed yet. It takes months before a baby's able to sit up, maybe four or five, six months before the baby's able to crawl, and then up to a year before the baby's able to walk. So how come humans are so helpless for so long? Our brains are really complex. Right. Uh, at nine months, they're definitely not fully developed. Actually, they're not fully developed until they're about 21 years old. In the meantime, babies are still pretty cute. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. It's so cute, yeah. Yes, you are. <laughs> A lot of other people think so, too. Why are babies so cute? Street smarts. So what makes babies so cute? They talk funny. They're just so small and they, yeah, they're just cute. They're naturally cute. <laughs> they're just, yeah. I like it when they sleep because their lips are like moving and then it goes <laughs> <laughs> I can hold them and their feet are as big as my thumb and they're soft. They're soft. They're soft. <laughs> and they all love me. I just love their legs. They're just so squeezable. <laughs> <laughs> I like newborns because they have no teeth. <laughs> I just love their adorable laugh. It always makes me laugh. Hey, I think it's time that we pretend like we're babies. Uh. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> I had to give the baby back to your cousin. I think he was hungry. Must be lucky to be that cute. I can never get away with making that much noise. I actually think that we're programmed to think that babies are cute. What do you mean by programmed? It's kind of like human animal instinct. It's built in. You mean we just know we have to take care of babies? That's how humans survive? Yeah, babies need a lot of care in the beginning. We really need to take care of them and we need to want to take care of them. Right. I found out that a lot of animals that we think are cute have the same characteristics as human babies. Oh, they're so cute, the big arms and the big head and the smile. Oh, they're so cute. Oh. <coughs> Even some cartoon characters have some of the same characteristics. For instance, if I were a cartoon character and you wanted to make me look really cute, you'd make my head bigger and you'd make my eyes really large and you'd make my arms short, and you'd probably give me a squeaky little voice, too. I'm tired, cutie pie. I wonder if that's why my sister talks baby talk every time she wants mom to buy her something. Oh, please, 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 can I have it? And it works a surprising amount of the time. Maybe my parents are programmed to think it's cute. Anyway, next time your parents tell you to stop watching cartoons, tell them you can't help it, and that you're programmed to like cute, big-eyed cartoon characters. Again? Oh.
Why do babies cry so much? Yeah, so you're a pediatric nurse. Why do babies have to cry all the time? Because that's the only way they have to communicate. Well, they don't have much to say. On the contrary, they actually have tons to say. Babies don't have their words until they're about one. So crying is their way of communicating how hungry they are, if they're thirsty, if they're not feeling well, if they have a tummy ache. We want them to communicate. <laughs> <sighs> so if I have a baby someday, and he doesn't start talking until he's one years old, and then he has to cry every time he wants something, so how much crying will I have to listen to? A lot. Let's see. The cousin's baby drinks milk every three hours, plus burping after every meal. That equals eight burps a day, plus rocking to sleep, plus four naps a day, plus a bedtime at 8 p.m. times 365 days, plus if he's too cold in the winter and too hot in the summer, my head's getting hot too. Ah! How may I serve you, oh crying one? Would you like a blankie? Would you like a bottle? Would you like Harrison's favorite teddy bear, Mr. Snugglesworth, to drool all over? Harrison. 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 Oh, sorry. I didn't get much sleep last night with the baby crying. And you said crying is communication, but it doesn't sound like much. Uh, yeah, actually, it is communication. And some parents actually believe that they know what the baby needs by the way that the baby cries. So do all babies have the same cries, or, or do they have different cries? Like, do they have their own? Babies all cry probably for the same things, but experts believe that certain babies cry depending on what they need, and we should understand what they need depending on basically the way they cry. I wish my parents anticipated everything that I want. Whoa, it worked. Thanks for helping us find stuff out. No problem, Harrison. Enjoy your milkshake. Speaking of milk, here's a question from Elizabeth. Why does my baby brother drink so much milk? <laughs> I found out that babies drink so much milk because for a long time, it's the only food that they can eat. Before babies can learn to swallow regular food, milk is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But if you want to know who drinks more milk than your baby brother, it's time for... My Great Challenge! Today, my great challenges are Jaden... Hey. ...and Haley. Yay! A baby cow drinks two of these every single day. But he doesn't use a bottle. A baby calf drinks milk straight from his mom. Human babies can also drink milk straight from their moms. But we also drink cow milk, and to do that, we have to get the milk out of the cow. Okay, so your challenge is to milk these cows and get as much milk as you can in one minute. The person with the most milk at the end of the minute will be the winner. Sound good? Yep. Yeah. Are you ready to milk this challenge? Yeah. You have one minute. Go! Real cows have four teeth. That's the nipple that the milk comes out of but our challengers have their hands full with two. Haley's already got the hang of it. Oh, Jaden's getting it now, too. 30 seconds. Farmers milk cows twice a day. A cow can make enough milk to fill 27 cartons every day. That's more than 100 glasses. 15 seconds. I hope the loser won't cry over spilled milk. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop milking. A pretty close race here. It looks like the winner is Haley. Yay! Congratulations. So what was it like milking a cow? It felt all wet because I was missing. It was, you were missing the bucket a lot, and what about you? It's hard. It's hard? What was the hardest part about the challenge? Aiming the bucket. The hurting of the thumbs. Oh, your thumbs started to hurt? Awesome, well, thanks for playing my great challenge. And I'll never take a milkshake for granted again. Here's another question. Why are the parents so bossy? 
Good question, Grayson. I checked the answer, and it turns out human parents aren't the only ones. Animal parents are bossy too, from elephants to kangaroos. Any mammal in the zoo is telling its own kids what to do. Wipe your paws, don't play with your prey. Crowd to scare the humans away. Get in a cave and go to sleep. Don't provoke the wild beasts. Animal parents are bossy too, so animal kids learn what to do. Animal parents are bossy too, so animal kids learn what to do. Yeah! It turns out the reason parents are bossy is because they have to keep us safe and teach us how to be grown-ups. I know you are, but what I am I? I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? I know you are. They learned how to do that from their parents. What am I? Who learned it from their parents? Who learned it from their parents? Are, but what am I? I guess that brings us back to the question that gave birth to this show. Why do we have families? The big answer is... Survival! Living in families helped our human ancestors survive. It helps us, too. Families take care of us when we're sick and when we're babies and can't do anything for ourselves. And we can take care of them, too. We're all better off when we take care of each other. Even if sometimes we drive each other crazy. I know you only copy me because you want to be just like me. Gross! I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? See you next time for more Finding Stuff Out. See you next time for more Finding Stuff Out. Yeah. <laughs>